Alrighty, welcome back. This is what we're doing today. Zach is going to learn how to do some welding, and we're just going to make a little video on his recognizance. We're going to watch him do it because he's going to learn how to weld. What, what is going on is I've got this tail light here. Um, it needs to be welded in the back, and it's a good chance for, for Zach to learn. And, uh, and I don't mind showing him because he's here helping me. We're helping each other. Uh, but basically, this is what's going on. We have a two sheets of metal here. I've got them put together. I've got them stuck like this. And what that's called right there is called, is called lap welding. Uh, most everybody that watches probably on YouTube or Facebook kind of realizes that that's a lap weld because it's lapped over top. And, and, and this would be called a butt weld. If you butt weld it together like that, we're not doing that right at the present moment. We're just trying to learn uh, the basics of it. <clears throat> And, and what I want to do is, I'm not going to make it any harder than it should be. The welder is set to work. I'm not going to try to throw that at him right now because basically he, we want to learn how to put a spot of weld on two pieces of metal that are lapped over each other. And uh, I'm going to show you and show Zach at the same time. And if you don't want to watch, it does not matter. And if you do, that's great. But I'm going to give Zach, well, I'm not even going to give him a helmet right now. I'm going to just take the welder. <clears throat> We have to realize, I want to thank Lincoln for, for uh, supplying such great welders. They've welded up every car that I've ever built, and I have to thank Lincoln for that. Uh, Zach's going to get to use the new helmet and see how beautiful it is. Um, so basically, we must know that we have to have the ground hooked to the metal. Sometimes I try to weld without the ground, and we all know it does not work, and it's just because I'm in a hurry. So we've got a ground there. Uh, the welder is already set. I'm not going to go over all the settings on it. I'm going to say that we're on B. This is a 220 welder. We're on B, and the wire speed is set at 6, and the gas is set at 10. Don't have to remember that. Just You'll get to that after. But it's on B, wire setting is on 6, and the gas is on 10. I like 10 on gas because I try not to use it up as, you know, as much as I can because it costs money, obviously. But <clears throat> uh, when I'm doing that, when we turn this on, uh, it'll be ready to weld because the ground's on. When I turn this on and I touch the metal, it does not weld. We're, we're, we're on. The ground is on. It does not weld. So the MIG welder, you do not have to be scared of it. The only time you, the only time you have to worry about anything is when you pull the trigger and it's near the metal. That's the only time you have to worry. Uh, basically, what I'm going to show Zach is uh, the, the amount of time that I think the welder should be welding uh, the metal because we're going to do it one spot at a time. On a car, everything, all the sheet metal is it's thin. I use 18 gauge, but some people use thinner, some people use thicker. You know, it's their preference, but I use 18 gauge. But when you're welding sheet metal, uh, sheet metal should be put on one stitch at a time because the fact of warping it. When you warp it, that means you have to go back in and fix it with dollies and hammers and uh, with a little bit of knowledge. And if you warp it too much, you ever tell oil can, you ever tell that? When you oil can something, when you push on it, it goes bow, 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 like the metal has been stretched. It's, there's too much there. When you put too much heat there, everything, all the molecules and they start running away. And you know why? Because it's hot. Yeah. You know, if I, got you, if I burnt you, you'd run away too, wouldn't you? I'd hope so, yeah. yeah. Well, that's exactly what's going on there. Things are running away when it gets too hot. And if you get it too hot, then, <coughs> then you distort metal. We don't like to do that. And I try not to have the tools around to fix warped metal because I try not to warp it. <laughs> Basically, I try to stay away from it. It's not warped, and I'd rather not warp it. So I'm just going to show exactly right now, basically, how... Well, how easy it is. I'm going to weld without a helmet. I'm going to give you a helmet. You're going to get that adjusted to your, to your liking. I'm going to weld without a helmet. So you can weld without a helmet. And the reason I'm saying that is, is because when I put the wire, I'm going to put the wire where I want it even before I start. That's basically what I'm saying. I put the wire where I want it before I start. So every time when you go to put a stitch down, you have to place the wire. I want to weld these two metals together. You have to place the wire where you want to weld. So what I want to weld is this piece and this piece together. So why wouldn't I start right there? I wouldn't want to start up here. 
I wouldn't want to start back here. I want to start right there. So as I'm, do, as I'm going to do this, I'm going to show you that you can weld blindfolded because, or because you're going to put this where you want it first. You can see the distance that I have. You can see the distance I have? See how far away I am? Yep. I'm only about probably, you know, quarter of an inch away, and I'm just going to weld a spot of metal on here. I'm going to weld these two pieces together, and I'm going to put the wire where I want it. I got two hands. I'm going to use two hands. Uh, it, it's harder to just take a hand, take your hand and, and weld like that. You know, you're kind of moving around a little bit. Take your other hand and make, you, make sure you support yourself. Support your other hand. We'll just put that on there a little bit. Support your other hand so I'm nice and steady. So I'm going to hold that right there and just, I'm just going to hold that right there. Just practicing, you know, just holding it right there. And that's what I got to do. Just hold it like that. So that's the first thing you got to do. You got to be able to take the welder, put it where you're going, and hold it. That's it. So after that, after I get my positioning, I just got to pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. So you put your helmet down. I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to put my, put my wire where I want it. I'm going to hold it where I want it. Now I'm going to pull the trigger. So when I say I'm going to weld blindfold, all I'm going to do is shut my eyes. Come take a look. I've welded those two pieces of metal together. And that's basically how you weld sheet metal on the car. That's, ba that's, how, that's how easy it is. As I've done that, I've put a spot there. I've kept it what? Let's do it again. Just one second. I'm going to let Fiend in because she's my dog and I love her. We're on air. <laughs> <clears throat> Come on in. She always goes to Zach now nice. when she comes in the morning because she gets free rubs. Hi, sweetie. She don't have to pay a thing. All right, let's go on, Phoenix. Go lay down. We're going we're to learn how to weld here. So I'm going to do this again. Um, I did not look at that. I did not anything. I did not look at that. And it's, a, and it's a perfect spot on a weld to start welding sheet metal on the car. I'm going to do it again. Also, as I put one there, when we're welding on the car, we would, we don't, we, I don't want to go back there again. It's already got a spot of weld. It's already got a spot of well. So what I want to do is I want to move on. So I want to move to four to five inches, six inches, whatever. I want to come up here. I want to make sure I got my hand down. I want to make sure that my wire's where it needs to be. I'm going to hold there, hold it there. I know it's steady. I know I'm going to weld there. Now I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to weld it. There's my second spot. Perfect. It's going perfect. And the reason being is I've welded the metal together. You can see it. Yeah. So. On your third spot, you would do the exact same thing. You would find four inches away, six inches away, whatever, and do the exact same thing and weld it again. Let's do it one more time. Got my wire there. It's at where it needs to be. Close my eyes. Turn the gas up a little bit. Nope. Oh, turn the gas on. Ha ha! Didn't even turn the gas on this morning. All right, gas is on. I'm gonna knock this over. I can touch it. It doesn't hurt me because I'm not pulling the trigger. I'm not grounded. We'll just burn that off. Watch this now. Burn that off. Just pull the trigger, let off it. So now we got the spots on like this. That's how it's, you know, how we started. We go, we, so we have the tail light. So if the tail light was here, this is what we're doing. We're going long. One, that far, then there, then there, then there then there, then there, all the way across. So now as we get going closer, <clears throat> as we get one, you know, we get going closer, as we start filling this thing in, we're gonna get close enough that we're gonna wanna start doing fours or fives. And what I mean by fours and fives is a spot of weld like that, four in a row. And we start doing that, then we'll start using air. But as we got it like this, now I wanna, I wanna, I wanna continue this weld here. I wanna make weld this here. I wanna continue this one along to make it look right and to weld it in solid. Basically what I'm saying, everything on your car should be welded in solid. And the reason being is because of penetration of moisture, water, whatever. Uh, they say that uh, fiberglass is water resistant, but I've seen it come off because of water getting underneath it and pushing it off, uh, basically. So as we get going like this, the wire has to go or should go right there. There's where we want to weld. I don't want to weld over here like that. See how I'm a little ways away there? I don't want to do that. I want to weld right there. I'm going to close my eyes. You're going to put your helmet on. 
All right, you ready? Yes, sir. You can see how, the, how the, that spot well there laid over top of that one. Can you see that? Yep. See how it laid over top of that one? Yep. So if we're going to do it again, this is, this is what I want. I want that wire in there on the, tight on that corner of that weld. Close your eyes. That one lays on top of that one. So what, what, what that is doing is that's making sure or trying to make sure that there's no pinholes that can come out. And I'll show you, I'll show you what I'm thinking if you do it the wrong way. So if we go over here, we have a spot of weld here. If we come over here and we lay this one like this, watch your eyes. <clears throat> There's a little spot in between. You can see that. The water might get up and through that. We don't want that. So basically what I'm saying is we come over here. As we got that spot there, we lay the wire right next in that corner where this one is. You lay it in the corner. Watch your eyes. A little fast. But so you can see how it overlaid. So basically, <clears throat> the welds that we want to put on our cars are like this. Now this is what I want you to do, Zach. I want you to take your brain, take your brain, and listen to how long that I've, I've held the wire on. Just take, don't even put your helmet on. I'll tell you when to close your eyes. And you listen how long I've, I've, put, I've, put, I've turned the welder on. So I'm gonna take it on, I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna just put the wire head a little bit here. Not too much, but anyway, yeah. So I'm gonna weld a spot. You tell me how long it is. Close your eyes. About a second and a half. Okay, second and a half, okay. Let's do it again. Close your eyes. Two seconds. Two seconds, okay. So about two seconds per dot. So you're going to have to take that and put it in your brain as you pull the trigger and do your spot. See, when, you, when you're watching, when you're watching yourself weld, um, you're going to have to pay attention how long you're pressing, turning the welder on, learning where your wire is, all that sort of stuff. It's kind of nice, actually, to, to learn how to weld without a helmet. Come over here, Zach. Uh, you might, I don't know if you want a pair of gloves. You might want a pair of gloves. You might get burnt and you might say, yeah, we'll put a pair of gloves on. So basically what's going to happen is Zach is going to learn how to weld without a helmet. And that's how, that's how easy it is. The helmet can sometimes confuse you because you think you're doing <coughs> something that you, I don't know what to say. Um, it's nice to see what you're welding as you're doing it. But to learn to weld, it's just as easy as to close your eyes pull the trigger, listen how long it's been, look at it after you're done. Then when you go to put your helmet on, you can see exactly what's going on. Okay. That wire right there is right in the middle of your puddle of weld. So get, pull your, grab your welder, do not pull your trigger, because when you pull your trigger, that means wire is coming out. Um, you want it about that far away from your metal. Find a, find a place on the metal where you want to put it, use both hands, put that hand down there. You want to get, no, nope, you're kind of angled off quite heavy. Don't pull your trigger yet. Let's, let's get it where it needs to be. Can you, can you, can you see, can you see that, can you hold it there so it stays there for a while? Don't pull the trigger. Yep. Don't pull the trigger. Uh, you're fine. You seem to be fine. He's holding it right there. What has to happen now, he has to close his eyes, pull your trigger. Just a second now. How long did you pull your trigger for? Not long enough. Boat. Millisecond, millisecond didn't you? yeah. So let's pull it up. Let's let's get the wire where it needs to be again. You get, can you see it? Can you see? Just angle a little bit to the side. Can you see your wire? Yep. Hold it there. Don't pull the trigger. Don't pull the trigger. Close your eyes. Pull the trigger. Too close. See you move. See where your see where your welder was. Okay. You moved it down on. So what has to happen is watch your eyes. What has to happen is watch this now. You have to be able to keep that there without moving. So when you pull the trigger, you don't, you can't, you're not allowed to move. See, you pushed it in towards the metal and it, watch, close your eyes. Do you know what I mean? My welder is still where I, let's try it again. So we're gonna put, put, the, put the wire where you need it. All right, just a second now. You're kind of cl close here, so you want, you want that, you want to get that welder away from your metal. You want it that far away. You don't want to touch this on the metal. Okay. 
This, this area does not want to touch, just the wire wants to touch. So grab your welder again. Do not pull the trigger unless we're ready. So, so we want to put our, we want to put our wire where we're going to weld. There's where you want to weld. Now hold it and just hold it there. Don't move it. Pull your, close your eyes, pull your trigger. There's your first weld. Did you hold it two seconds? About a second. A little. Okay, okay, well let's let's do it again. Okay. Let's let's put another let's go over here. Get your hand ready, get it held in spot. You want to hold it in spot. Now hold it there. Just make sure you stay there. Close your eyes. Pull your trigger. Good. Hey. hey. Right on. <laughs> cool. Let's uh let's do another one. So what has to happen? Let's do it again. Let's 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 just do it on your own. And once you get that a quarter inch away from there, where you you want that right on where you're welding, you hold it there. Right there, just, right? Yep. That's you're holding it there. You hold it there. Keep holding it there. Do not move. Close your eyes. You got two seconds. Pull it. Good. Awesome. Now you've welded that together. Cool. Okay. Let's let's do another one. Let's do another one. Let's do one right there. Get it where you need it. Is that, we is just, that close just, enough? Just give a little pull on the trigger, not on the metal. Just give a little pull on it, just so you get your metal out. Very perfect. All right, that's what happens. Okay, so we're going to put it where you want it. Put the wire where you want it. Do not pull it. Do not move. Close your eyes. Pull the trigger. Awesome. That's what you want. Unreal. So you have to... You <laughs> <laughs> Smile on his face. So basically, that's what you have to do all the way across so you can see how you can weld with no helmet if you wanted to like in oh, yeah. 10 yeah. if you want to but it's, it's just nice to see like you can carry on you won't get a flash but you have to do that every spot like that every six inches all the way across okay. and then you have to come back and do it again every six inches across and put it somewhere else if you pay attention you know what i mean let's go over here let's try here put your wire where you want it I want you to hold it there. Do not move. Close your eyes. Pull the trigger. Good. It's a little far pull, away. Just, you pulled it back a little bit. That's yeah. all. Let's, tr let's try here. It's a good. You want to pull that out just a little bit. You want to put that far away, right? Quarter inch, you'd say. About quarter inch, yeah. Okay. So put that wire right exactly where you want it. Right in that where the metal is coming together. Yep. You want to close your eyes. Don't move. Go for it. Oh shit. That's okay. Second now. Put it where you put it where you want it. Put the wire where you want it. Hold it. Close your eyes. Pull the trigger. A little close. And you can tell that was a little close because you hear the you hear, hear the noise. Yeah, it was, a lot it, was right, it was a little bit closer. Okay. So when you have the helmet on and your wires not out exactly where you want, like not out far enough, like basically what we're doing is we're making sure that the wire and I, and I'd like to see it kept see see where that wire is a little shy there mm -hmm. it, i would like to have it a little, a little bit longer to keep your keep your welder a little further away okay see when you have your helmet on see you can make that adjustment before you start you know what i mean it's great a, you're welding this blindfolded because your wire is exactly where it needs to be sometimes your wire is not out as far as it needs to be so that's why you're too close and it's making that noise when you have your helmet on you can come in here and make that adjustment but you know where the wire's going because you can see it. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if I'm that far away, that's where it should be, but that far away. If I'm that close away, well, then it, it comes squished and, it, goes, and don't, it don't weld that good. Pull away a little bit. We have no helmet on. Turn your helmet on. Or put your helmet on. So I'm going to show you exactly. So when the weld, that's why we use the helmet because every time when you're done welding, the wire is not the right distance away, if you know what I'm saying. So, so. so we, we've been practicing with the wire right down on the metal. So when we do that, that means that the welder is too close. Okay. With the helmet on, I can make the adjustment and pull it back and pull the trigger. So I'm going to close my eyes. See, I'm not touching the metal. Mm -hmm. You see, I'm not touching, or I'm touching there. But that's too close because the wire is in there. Mm -hmm. But what I have to do, when you have the helmet on, I can make the adjustment how far away I am. That's how far away I want to be. And I can see where I'm going to weld because I have the helmet on. Now I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to pull the trigger because I'm at the right distance. 
So that's, that's why we weld the helmet. So, you know, if, if I went back in to weld it with that distance there, that'd be great. But watch, the wire pushes in, you get too close. If now that I have the helmet on, now I can make the adjustment how far away I am and where I'm welding. So see, I'm not, my wire's not even touching now, eh? But that's how far away I want to be. So with my helmet on, I can do it. So I hold it steady enough, close my eyes, I can weld. You know, you know what I'm saying? Man, that's wicked. <laughs> so, so what's going to happen is, is Zach's going to do some spots. That's basically all that's going to happen all the way across on this tail light. That's all that's going to happen. He's going to do some spot welds on this. He's going to, you see the distance that I had there when I was doing that? Like it was, you, 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 you want a little bit of distance when you're, when you're welding that. We do not want to get too close. That's, that's not a bad distance right there. That's a good distance. But if you get this too close, this here will ground out and cause a, a mess. But if you, if you can find the distance, keep the welder where it needs to be, like steady, be steady, and you can weld that together every time. With the helmet, you can adjust if the wire's in too far. Well, then you, could, you just pull your welder back a little bit. When, you, when you're with your, helmet, with your helmet on, you can see where you're welding and if you're welding them two pieces together. And when you're welding with your helmet on, you have to keep in your brain how long is a good time of length of doing it. And you can burn holes in it. You can do all kinds of things to learn, but um, I suggest trying to keep your distance that far away. Keep the welder so you can see what you're doing, right? You don't want to turn, put it like this and you can't see your wire. Like I, I can't see my wire right at the present moment. That's why you put your head to the side or turn your welder just a little bit. Then I can see what my wire is doing. The wire has to stay in the middle of the puddle. As soon as you pull it out, it's, going to, it's not going to work for you. It's going to make splatters. So Zach's going to go all the way along there just doing spots one at a time with the helmet on so he can make adjustments to keep the welder far enough away to make a good spot weld. At the exact same time, you have to keep in your brain, in your head, how long you're pulling that trigger each time. And you'll get to watch the metal being welded, melted together. As you go along there, spot, 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 come back and put it. I showed you when you, what, listen, what, what, put your helmet on. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to weld, okay? I'll get you to go across there and do a bunch of spots across there. Then when you come back, you put your wire right there. Okay. Right? So you can overlap that part. Zach is going to, I'm going to give him a seat. And you're more than welcome to sit down and uh, figure out your distance. And do not pull the trigger until you're ready. Um, find your distance and your time. You can do whatever you want, Zach. You're on your own skill. I'm going to let Zach do that. And I want to go back in here for a second from last night's video. Um, we have we had some confusion. I just want to let people know or anybody know on on the rear end and on most cars the pumpkin is not in the center of the rear end. Generally on a lot of cars this pumpkin here is not in the center of the rear end. So what that means is I cannot take and center this pumpkin in the car because that wheel there would be over further on that side and this wheel would be close to the rear end. Cannot do that because the car would be lopsided. There would be more car on one side than the other. They do, they do not build cars like that. Um, we center the rear end at the same distance. Too close. Can you tell that? Yep. <laughs> cool. So make, when, when you go to do it next time, just make the adjustment of the distance away that you need to be even though the wire's not hitting the metal, you have to keep that distance and then pull your trigger. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's been in the military. And you've been to New Zealand, have you not? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Stop it. Yes, okay. Chad. <laughs> All right. So anyways, as, as the pumpkin is not in the center, because I've, I can take a measurement, just for the people that, you know, don't realize, or never, just, just for the people that don't realize, we're 19 inches on this side from the pumpkin. 19 inches. That sounded good. And we're 20, 20 and a half over here. So we're an inch and a half difference. We're an inch, inch, inch and a half difference on where the pumpkin is center on the, on the rear end. I cannot take this and bring this over uh, 
an inch and a half and have the wheel in here and take that wheel and push it up that way an inch and a half. It does not work that way. That's why I say that the universal joint is what's allowing us to do that. That's what's allowing us to do that, to have that rear end over there. When I said you could put your engine in a little bit crooked to miss maybe clutch pedals or brake pedals, um, I'm saying that because factory did it with the rear end. Why, we have a universal joint on the end of the motor. Why can't we do it with the engine? And you most certainly can. Uh, someone got a little mixed up, I guess. But you're allowed to bring this engine over this way a little bit and run the drive shaft crooked. The factory does. The universal joints, that's what they're for. Think of a tractor when you have a snowblower. The universal joints are changing all the time when the snowblower goes up and down and is running. So you really have to you know, take a few cars apart and understand that it's, you're, you're allowed to do that and they do it all the time. If you're not underneath the car and see the drive shaft running crooked, you really wouldn't know. But um, that's what happens. That's what the universal joints are for, to allow for that. Uh, and I have put engines in crooked because I know that it can work. It works because they do it with the rear end in cars all the time. Also, when I cut the hole in the chassis to put the exhaust through, there's a lot of people saying, well, no, that's, that's weak. It's going to crush there and all that stuff. Let's come here for a second. Let's do this. This is a piece of 2 by 4 steel. If I put this piece on the ground and put a, something here to crush that, the first thing that's going to happen is this side's going to go funny and it's all going to bend and go wonky and it's going to crush it. When I take a piece of pipe and put, weld it in, put it in there and I weld all this side and all this side, where, how is you going to crush this when all, this is, all the side is welded straight? So it would be like a wall in a house. If the wall in the house, if the wall got pushed out, the roof could come down. If the wall is connected to the floor in the middle, if I took something in the middle and welded it or braced it to another wall so it couldn't kick out, how is it going? How is the wall going to come down? You know, it's kind of. I know it, it. It plays with your brain a little bit, but if I went to crush that, the the side walls would crush. They would bend out. They would get all whatever. They bend out and go all funny. Where I have the the exhaust or the uh, piece of pipe walled in there, that's not allowing the the wall to go out. And you can see when I hit that piece of round stock with a hammer, there's so much strength there. You would have to be able to pull that apart to, to uh, wreck that. If I hooked the blazer up, put a piece of chain in that, hooked another blazer up and put a piece of chain in it, I bet you could not pull that pipe apart. I bet you could not. So you have to realize, um, as I've done that, I've put probably maybe more integrity into the chassis than it already had. Uh, the walls cannot come out so it can crush. To pull it apart, you would have to pull the pipe apart to pull the, the wall of the uh, frame apart. It's just a few things that, you know, I, I think about stuff like that when I'm building things. I don't want to build things unsafe or whatever. I mean, let's face it. But you, people have, you have to realize that if they can move the rear end and put the pumpkin knot in the center, that means that you can pull the engine and move it over a little bit and make that knot in the center because you have a universal joint here. They have a universal joint back there. It's just, it's just things that you can do. And I know this because factory does it. And if factory does it, that means that I can do it. And I'm learning from what they've already showed me. Now basically, that's what I'm doing. And Zach is learning from what I showed him, and then he can carry on from that and make himself happy. Beautiful. Sounds good. Sounds good, Zach. Sounds really good. So, right now, Zach is learning how to weld sheet metal. It's a little different on, on, on heavier metal. If you come over here and take a look at this one. I have weld, I've burnt that on there, and I've used the welder. I did not spot it at one spot at a time. I just welded it on. But what has to happen is, when I, when I throw that spot of weld down there, and to make a bead like that, I have to keep the wire in the middle of the puddle full time. If I do not keep the wire in the middle of the puddle, then it, then it starts spinning and it's not welding. Um, was that one a little far away? Yep. Ha <laughs> ha! There you go. So now you know, you can tell by the sound of what you're doing. So as I start the puddle, 
like Zach's doing, Zach's putting one dot on. As I do that, if you're welding heavier stuff and you're able to zap her in and make her hold on, you have to go slow enough to keep the puddle or the wire in the middle of the puddle all the way down. As soon as you pull it out, it's going to act up on it. You have to keep, so basically what you have to do is find the right um, allowance, how fast you're going to drag that, that weld by the, by the scent, by the wire in the middle of the puddle. So if you're welding with a helmet on, you can see when you pull the wire out of that middle of that puddle, you'll see it and it'll start spitting on you. You have to get the wire back in the middle of the puddle and pull the puddle as fast as it can go with the wire in the center. And that's how you run beads. I don't know what else more to say than that this morning. Everything's going well. Zach did a little bit of, did a little bit of uh, filling on the dash and, and it went well. So basically what I'm going to do, maybe do this morning, maybe do it a little later on today, I'm going to throw on some primer on a few things and uh, get a few things ready. I might even mix some filler and maybe do the back window. I want to leave the tail light for Zach so he can learn how to weld. Um, we're going we're gonna to trade that way. Uh, he helped me, I'll uh, help him, and that's the way it should go. All right, let's take a look here. Awesome, awesome. Come take a look. This is what we want right here. I like this one. I like that one. That's a little, little bit look there, but that's awesome. That looks good. One, two, three, four, all overlapped. Look really good. All the spots look good. You can tell when you get it too close, it, 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 it sounds different. Yeah. Yeah. When you get it for too far away, bah, 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 bah. And when you get it just right, it sounds like it's cooking bacon. So Zach is learning very quick. The flipper over, it would continue on. I like to see you weld all that, really, to be honest with you. Okay. And you can just start on each one and continue on. We have the welder on <coughs> speed on six. We have the, the, I guess the amount of amperage you're getting is on B. If you wanted to turn it up over here, it shows right here, it gets bigger. So that would be more amperage for thicker metal. Uh, the wire speed would be how fast the wire's coming out. And you can tell if the wire is wrong because if the wire's wrong when he starts welding, it'll go bup, 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 it's going too fast. If it's going too slow, the wire will melt off before it gets, welds the metal together. Okay. Basically. So we'll leave him to keep doing that. I'm going to try to get the dash, and maybe I'm going to do a few other things, get a few things primed for the car, and uh, we're going straight forward. Signing off.